Hey everyone, welcome back to The Medicine Niche. Today we're tackling a condition that's not exactly a household name, but affects a significant number of people around the world. Goiter. It's one of those things that sounds a little scary when you first hear it, but by the end of this video, you'll be a goiter expert and you'll know exactly what it is. A goiter is an enlargement of the thyroid gland, a butterfly-shaped organ located right here in your neck. Now don't let the fancy name intimidate you. It's basically your thyroid saying, I'm working overtime, or I need a little help. This can happen for a variety of reasons, ranging from iodine deficiency to autoimmune disorders like Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, or Graves' disease, and even thyroid nodules, or in rare cases, thyroid cancer. So what are the telltale signs of a goiter? Sometimes it's super obvious, a visible lump or swelling in the neck. Other times it's sneaky and comes with subtle symptoms like difficulty swallowing, a hoarse voice, or even a sense of tightness in your throat. If the goiter is linked to hyperthyroidism, you might notice symptoms like weight loss, a racing heart, and irritability. On the flip side, if hypothyroidism is the culprit, expect fatigue, weight gain, and feeling colder than your classmates in an air-conditioned lecture hall. Now, diagnosing a goiter isn't just about spotting that neck lump. It's about figuring out why it's happening. We start with a good old physical exam, checking for size, texture, and any tenderness. Next, we move on to blood tests to measure thyroid hormone levels. But wait, there's more. Ultrasonography is our go-to tool for confirming the diagnosis and checking the gland size in any nodules. If the goiter is large and causing breathing issues, we'll do a flow volume loop test to see if the trachea is being compressed. Planning an intervention, a CT or MRI of the thoracic inlet can show us how much the trachea is displaced or compressed. Any suspicious nodules need to be evaluated for thyroid cancer using fine needle aspiration biopsy or scintigraphy. Before we dive into treatments, let's quickly talk about the types of goiter. Goiters can be classified as diffuse, where the entire thyroid gland is uniformly enlarged, or nodular, which includes a single nodule or multiple nodules, often referred to as multinodular goiter. Now, prevention is better than cure, right? The best way to prevent goiter is to ensure you're getting enough iodine in your diet. Most countries use iodized salt. All right, now, let's talk treatment, because no one wants a goiter overstaying its welcome. Treatment depends on the cause and the symptoms. If iodine deficiency is the issue, we fix it by increasing dietary iodine, typically through iodized salt or supplements. For autoimmune causes, we use medications like levothyroxine for hypothyroidism or antithyroid drugs for hyperthyroidism. Though you'll need to monitor dosages closely, starting with, say, 25 to 50 micrograms of levothyroxine and adjusting based on TSH levels. If the goiter is too large, causing significant symptoms, or if there's suspicion of cancer, surgery might be the best option. And in cases of hyperthyroidism, radioactive iodine can shrink the thyroid gland. I hope this video clears up any confusion about goiter. Pun intended. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and let us know in the comments what you'd like us to cover next.